Hi guys, welcome back to the Ardor server. So sometimes I get people coming to my store asking me, hey, uh, I'm looking for an HBA card, but you know, I'm using a consumer PC motherboard and I've only got a PCI 4X or you know, by four slot. You know, do you have anything uh, that I could use, right? And, and that's kind of a hard uh, requirement to meet with uh, at least Broadcom LSI cards because there really aren't many options available that are great for uh, a PCIe uh, by four slot. Uh, most uh, LSI HBA cards are by eight and there's some a few by 16s, um, but there really are only uh, very few by four cards and some of them are right, right here right now, which I'm gonna talk about. So in the past, I made a video telling you guys about the smallest HBA card I've ever found and that was this guy right here. This is the IBM H1110. Uh, normally this runs um, a uh, RAID uh, firmware from IBM and uh, it uses the uh, LSI SAS 2008 chipset. So it's an older chipset that is PCI 2.0. But the nice thing about this is that it has uh, only four PCI lanes. And so if that's all you've got, you know, this is one of those options that's that's possible for you. And this isn't a bad card or anything like that. It's just that it's, you know, limited by uh, by PCI 2.0. And so that means even with four lanes, I think that's uh, equ equates to about 16 gigabits per second. And, and you know, that is enough if you're, all you're doing is connecting a bunch of hard drives. And really there's only one port here. So uh, you can only connect to uh, four hard drives. And for four hard drives, you only need about eight, eight gigabits of uh, bandwidth. So 16 gigabits on these uh, by four to PCI 2.0 by four is completely uh, adequate. Okay, but you know, a lot of you guys want to connect more than just four drives and you can, yes, you could connect this to a SAS expander and uh, you know, and that you get more ports, but the PCI 2.0 by four is going to really limit you to the amount of bandwidth. So 16 gigabits is basically good for about eight hard drives. And so you really can't expand too much more. Like you could put a SAS expander to this that gives you uh, two ports, but a lot of SAS expanders actually give you like four or six ports or something like that. And, you know, yeah, you could connect those hard drives, but um, first you'd be limited to this one connection. All, you know, all that IO is going to come through the SAS expander into this connection. And then it's going to hit that PCI by four, uh, 2.0, right? 2.0 uh, by four. And uh, you're likely going to hit that limit if you have more than eight hard drives. So today I want to introduce you guys to a better solution and that is this combination right here. So this here is a uh, Lenovo or IBM, you know, it's kind of the same thing really, right? They, the, the server division got sold to Lenovo, right? So, uh, but this is the M1210 card and this is a SAS 3004 based chipset. So it's a newer chipset than this. This is a SAS 2000, actually I said 2008, didn't I? It's 2004 because it only has four SAS lanes. So this is a LSI SAS 2004 chipset, uh, PCI 2.0, four SAS lanes. And this is two generations newer. This is the uh, SAS 3008, um, or sorry, 3004 that has PCI 3.0 support. And that's really uh, one of the key factors of why I wanna introduce you guys to this card because even though that's only four lanes, uh, because it's PCI 3.0, it's got almost 32 gigabits of bandwidth right there. And so if you have a PCI 3.0 capable motherboard with a by four slot, or you know maybe, um, yeah, if you have a by four slot that's PCI 3.0 capable, then you can take advantage of this card uh, because it has that PCI 3.0 support giving you about almost 32 gigabits of bandwidth uh, there. So that means that you could handle, if you're doing hard drives, you could handle about 16 spinning hard drives. If you're using SSDs, yeah, you know, you're going to saturate that PCI bandwidth quicker, much quicker than using hard drives. But if you are using hard drives, you can actually connect up to 16 hard drives and uh, this will be adequate PCI bandwidth. Okay. So now this only has one port. So it has four SAS lanes, but this is a SAS 3 controller. So if you connect this 
to a SAS 3 expander like this Adaptec card here. This is the AEC-8. Uh, -8 2885T. It is a SAS 3 expander. It's not a uh, LSI chipset. It's a uh, PMC Sierra, or you know, I guess they bought Ad Adaptec, so it's kind of Adaptec PMC, uh, PMC Sierra uh, chipset. And this does SAS 3. So when you connect these guys together with um, a little cable like this, right? This is a SFF 8643 to SFF 8643. It's a nice short little cable that you can plug into this port here, and then you can have this card right next to it and plug that port right in there. And uh, that little, this one little cable, okay, is going to give you, because it has four lanes and they're SAS three lanes, so there's 12 gigabits, this is going to give you 48 gigabits of bandwidth, right? That's pretty good for, you know, because of the SAS three link speed which this one doesn't have, right? This is a SAS two, so you only get six gigabit. Uh, so that is a six by four, that's 24 gigabits. This is double that. You're gonna get 48 gigabits of SAS bandwidth. You're going to have, um, so that's 48, but so it's gonna be more than what you get on the PCI uh, bandwidth here, which is gonna be about 32 gigabits. And once you plug it into the SAS expander, this gives you, uh, this part's gonna be used by, or, you know, you can use any of these ports really, but one of these ports is going to be used to connect to the, the controller and the rest of the ports you can connect to hard drives. And so this uh, is one, two, three, four, five, six. That means you can connect up to 24 drives using the setup and, and there's more, this also has external ports. So if you wanted to, you could connect this to an external drive enclosure for additional drives or you could actually get more of these and daisy chain them through the external port so you have more internal ports. If, you, if you've got a case that has more than 24 hard drives or, you know, or maybe uh, you're connecting some SSDs too or whatever, right? Um, you could basically daisy chain a couple of these with the external port and just connect them with a short SFF84 or 8644 cable between the SAS expanders. All right, so now obviously, uh, the PCI bandwidth on this is limited, right? It's a 30, about 32 gigabits per second, which is a lot better than what this thing offered. Okay, so that's, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's some limitations, okay? So, um, you know, you can connect uh, a, a lot more drives, but you just be aware that there's, you know, ultimately a limitation here on the PCI bus, okay? So, but with uh, 32 gigabits of bandwidth, uh, like I said, I think that's good enough for 16 drives. And so, you know, uh, if you were to connect a heart of four, uh, four of these ports with hard drives, right? Four times four is 16. So if you, you know, connected these four ports of hard drives, you'd have just about, you'd be at the limit of, of your PCI bandwidth. Um, but, you know, if you're like, hey, I don't really care about running my hard drives at, at their maximum speed all the time, uh, you could connect, you know, more hard drives to this, uh, the two remaining ports here. And you can daisy chain additional uh, drives uh, to other SAS expanders through the external ports, you know, either to an enclosure or just add another one of these cards and then, you know, connect them together with a cable there. So anyway, I just wanted to introduce this combo because I think this is actually, you know, a pretty good solution for people who don't have a lot of PCI lanes. And, and I know some of you guys are building your servers based on some old PC hardware you might have laying around. You know, you, you guys build your own computers and you have an old motherboard and, and you've heard that, you know, repurposing some old motherboards for your server is a great idea. Uh, I'm conflicted about that, by the way. I don't really think that's always a great idea, but hey, if you know, if you can reuse what you already have, uh, I can see why, you know, uh, better than sitting in the closet or in a box somewhere, right? Like, make use of it. Uh, so that part is good. Uh, sometimes I don't really think consumer PC motherboards are a great solution for a server. But, uh, if, but if your needs are not so great and you don't care for flexibility and expandability or whatever, you know, yeah, you can make it happen. And so here I'm trying to offer you guys a solution to make that happen. And so if you've only got a PCI by four slot uh, that's 3.0 capable, you might wanna take into consideration this combination here, okay? And, and oh, by the way, the other thing is that you might be thinking, hey, I only got one PCI by four slot. What am I gonna plug this card into, right? Uh, the good news is you don't need to put this in a PCI slot, or at least not in a slot in the motherboard. Okay, you can mount this in a 
uh, a PCI slot on the case, right, like through the mounting bracket here, right, and mount that. Um, but this connector doesn't need to be in a motherboard PCI slot. Okay, so like if you have a case that's that uh, you know is larger than the motherboard, and and you have some vacant slots that are not over the slot on the motherboard, you can mount this there. Okay, not have it plugged in, and all you need to do is plug in a uh, four pin Molex uh, power connector here to power this card on because this is not a PCI device, okay? This is a SAS expander. It, it uses this connection for power, basically, right? The, these pins are not connected to any, anything here. So when you plug this into a PCI slot, all it's doing is drawing power, uh, f you know, to turn this card on. And you can do that alternatively by just plugging in a four pin Molex. Right? So you could, if you again, if you don't have a lot of PCI slots, you got one by four slot for this card, that's all you need. You can mount this somewhere else in your chassis and uh, you know, connect it together with this card, uh, but this doesn't have to take up a PCI slot on the motherboard, okay? Uh, I do recommend that you mount this you know, in a proper place. Uh, I, I think for proper grounding and all that stuff, that would be a, a good uh, idea, but this doesn't need to take up a PCI slot. So, you know, so you could have multiple of these just, you know, mounted in the, in the case, but not in a PCI slot. And as long as this guy has the PCI lanes to connect to, uh, and then you can connect these together, you're good to go. Right. So anyway, I just want to share this combination with you because, um, I know some of you are, are working with limited PCI resources because you're using an old, um, consumer PC motherboard. And uh, I want to share the setup with you. So now let's go ahead and I don't want to just talk about this. Let's go set this up in my demo server uh, just to kind of, you know, show you how this all works. Okay. Sorry. Let's go over there. All right, guys. So here is my setup. I've got the uh, M1210 uh, installed back there. I actually go, uh, go ahead and grab the second uh, AEC 82885T SAS expander. I've got two of them. This first one's connected directly to the controller and uh, that's flashed IT mode by the way and this uh, SAS expander is then daisy chained to this SAS expander with this external cable right there okay and uh, I know this is a little bit of a janky setup but I've got some hard drives in the back plane here that are coming through these cables and uh, these are SFF 8087 so they won't fit directly into this uh, SAS expander because that's a SFF8643. So I just use this adapter and this cable here uh, to convert that basically. Okay, so over here I have my monitoring program. And so you can see that I have a uh, SAS 3004 controller. That's that M1210 card. And it's got four links to uh, the SAS expanders at 12 gigabit links each. And uh, down here, you'll see that it shows that there are two um, SAS expanders, the two AEC 82885Ts. And right now there's nothing there um, because I haven't plugged in the cables yet. So here we go. Let's go test this out. So first I'm going to plug it in. Uh, so you guys can see here. I'm gonna plug it into that first expander. And uh, let's see here. So give it a few minutes or seconds. I, I don't know. Sometimes it takes some time. Let's see. Those are old hard drives, so it takes a while for them to come online here. Come on. You can do it. Ah, there we go. So yeah, these are ancient Maxter drives. Uh, so yeah, there's a four hard drives. Like that cable uh, is a four-lane cable, so there's only four hard drives connected to it. And you can see that they eventually showed up, right? So, okay. So, um, all right, I'm gonna unplug it from this port and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into one of the ports back here. So just randomly pick any of these, we'll do. All right, plugged it back in. And uh, let's wait a little bit for those drives to uh, show up again. Yep, there we go. There's two, four, and they're all online. All right, so uh, so that's the first SAS expander. And I've got these daisy chains, so I'm gonna unplug this. And uh, let's go ahead and 
plug it into this first port over here. Okay. <clears throat> I know sometimes you guys uh, send me Adaptec documentation saying, well, you can't use that port because the documentation says that port's only for the controller, the SAS controller. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know why they said that in documentation, but it's not true. I've tested these things uh, multiple times in different configurations. You can pretty much use any of these ports to connect the drives, okay? Uh, but anyway, here, let's go take a look at the monitoring. Yeah, all right, so while I was uh, saying all that stuff, the four drives already showed up, uh, as you can see there. All right, so let me go ahead and unplug that, and let's just go ahead and plug in into uh, one of these ports in the back here. Just gonna randomly pick one, plug that in, and uh, let's see. All right, there's two, there's four. All right, so yeah, so this configuration, as I have it right now, gives me, uh, let me just take that out of the way. Um, so I have uh, two, four, six ports here. And so that's six times four. I could basically connect 24 drives to the SAS expander. And then on this one, since I'm using the external ports to daisy chain them, I actually have, um, here if you can see, I've got the six and one, so there's seven ports right there. And uh, so that's a seven times four, which is 28. So I could connect 28 drives on the second SAS expander. I can connect 24 drives on that first SAS expander. And they're all gonna go through that uh, cable right here through the M1210 uh, controller. And that is a uh, SAS three controller, so you've got at least 48 gigabits of bandwidth through this one cable. And, uh, and like, you can verify that there, right? So you got four connections at 12 gigabits, right? So that tells you that this is uh, gonna carry 48 gigabits of bandwidth and you've got uh, 32, roughly 32 gigabits of PCI bandwidth, right? So if you have a uh, PCI 3.0 capable motherboard that only has a by four slot, uh, this could be a good solution for you if you want to connect a lot of drives. Now, of course, caveat is, of course, um, the more drives you you connect, uh, the closer you get to saturating the PCI bandwidth. And uh, so, if you want to figure out how to, um, you know, calculate your bandwidth and, and size things correctly or whatever, um, I made a video about that many years ago. So I'll, I'll link that in the corner for you if you want to go check that out. But um, but if you don't care about you know being able to run all your hard drives at maximum speed and you just want to have a lot of connectivity, I mean this is what you could do. And you could even add like a third expander, uh, or even a fourth or however many. Um, there is a limit to how many drives can be addressed by that controller. I don't remember off the top of my head right now, but you know even some of the older controllers could do 256 drives. So I, I imagine that would be the lower limit of what that controller can handle it probably can handle more um but you know at, at 256 drives we're talking about several of these right so you, you know we're already kind of exceeding i mean that's you basically you could fill up these two sas expanders already uh this is less than 256 drives in total connectivity here right um so but you could add probably a few more you know so anyway i just thought this was a interesting setup that might help some of you guys out when you've got limited pci uh, lanes on your motherboard and you desire to configure uh, a lot of drives in your setup uh, so long as you're not really concerned about saturating the PCI bandwidth you know I mean this is a legitimate setup and it's better than that H1110 which is an old PCI 2.0 card all right so guys if you if you like this setup and you're interested in these products to uh, set it up like this I'll leave links to these products down in the video descriptions go check that out and if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, if you are into this sort of stuff, or you're new to this channel, uh, consider subscribing to the channel so you can, you know, check out all my other videos and stuff like that regarding uh, storage servers and stuff like that. And if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I'll leave a link down in the video description. I've got the best selection of pre-flashed IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your ZFS, TrueNAS, or Unraid needs. So go check that out. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.